Ken. South Ohio at Stambaugh Stadium. The Penguins of Youngstown State defending and undefeated national champions. They feel that there's nobody can come into this stadium. Mike Mayock can beat them, including Steve McNair and his all-corn state Braves. And here comes the Heisman Trophy candidate. You know, you've, got, you've got a championship game in every football division and every other sport. Yet here it is, maybe the biggest spectacle in the country, Division 1A football, and they can't get it done on the field. All right, the head coach of the Penguins of Youngstown State is Jim Tressel, and he's had his team in the playoffs 10 seasons Actually, this is his 10th trip to the playoffs. You see his great record in his ninth season, nine seasons here at Youngstown State. Across the way, in his fourth season at Alcorn State, is Cardell Jones, the man who says that life will go on once Steve McNair <laughs> matriculates. The Youngstown State Penguins in their red uniforms with black pants and red and white trim. And here we go. This one will be taken by Singleton on the fly at the 15. Over to 25, he's pounded to the turf at the 27. As the wind kicks off, the kick off. McNair at quarterback, of course, the only setback is Tony Bullock, the fullback. Hinton, Ross, McNair, that's Tim McNair, Steve's brother, and Turner, the excellent core of receivers in the offensive line. They'll be tested today. Robinson, Floyd, Graham, Ellison, Phillips, three wide receivers to the left, one to the right. McNair from the shotgun. He's got loads of room to run, and he's tacked and fumbles the football. It's picked up by Youngstown State. Fumble on the first play, Jermaine Hopkins picks it up. Did a job that piece, forced the fumble. Mike Brungard, number 12, brings out the Penguins of Youngstown State. will run down their offense in just a moment. The handoff is to number 32. Marcus, Marcus Colley, the Youngstown State offense, can't. Sean Patton and Mac Gilchrist are listed as the starters behind Mark Blungard. The wide receivers are Whistler, Trent Boykin, and Brian Terleski, the tight end. And the offensive line, Miller, Hogg, Samuel, Max Delvicchio, and George Thomas. Nakia Hendricks, substitute tailback, took that first hand off of the game. Picked up seven yards. And it's again. He the tackle at the one-yard line. Again, the give, and the touchdown is to Nakia Hendricks, number 32, and it's 6-0 Youngstown. We played one minute and 20 seconds. How big a series is that? Run guard the holder, the kick is up, and the kick is good. We still have only 13 minutes and 40 seconds yet to play in the first quarter, and already Youngstown State takes the turnover, and they lead it 7 0 John Dorma, he handles the kickoff duties. They've had problems, as Mike mentioned, with kickoffs going out of bounds. This one doesn't. It goes to Gory White, always an adventure at the 10. He fumbles a lot, but he also has a lot of speed, and he holds on this time. You will see very seldom, if ever, more than one step back in the backfield with McNair. Lots of time over the middle intended for Tim McNair, well covered by Reginald Lee. It'll for all corn State. Jerome Harness in it, running back instead of Harry Brown, and this is Harness in the flat. He will pick up yardage up to near the 45. Third down of about a yard. McNair calls his own number, and vaults forward. He should have the first down. McNair from the shotgun again. Gets away, but can't get away again. And they're going to call it an incomplete pass. They say his arm was coming forward. Already, McNair has seen more turf in this game than he did last week the entire game against Jackson State. Quick handoff, a draw play call, hoping to surprise the Youngstown defense. Yeah, it's a different world from Jackson or Lorman, Mississippi, isn't it? A little bit warmer down there, I think, today. McNair going across the middle, and the pass is incomplete, intended for Donald Ross. He's going to wait the punt. Some pressure on Castro, but it gets over an end over end kick, and here comes Boykin. Got the room. Trent Boykin over the 35 yard line. Did a dead ball foul. Unsportsmanlike on the offense. All right, Youngstown State comes out with the back split behind the quarterback front guard. In motion goes Boykin, and here's the tailback, Patton. Sean Patton, who carries the heavy load of taking this game with a shutout crowd. All the games here at Youngstown sold out. Max in the eye this time, run guard. Will he pitch it or keep it? He'll keep it and he'll be tackled across the way. So the first passing down, if you will, of the day for run guard. That's the only setback behind him. Run guard looking right all the way and in and out of the 
hands of Don Swistler, number 37, the putter. And back in single safety is Singleton. Percy Singleton at the 33. He's going to die, and down he goes at the 39. The care, one out of four in the day, nine yards. And he's fumbled once and been hit twice in the pocket. There he goes long down the center of the field and almost intercepted. Second and ten for McNair and company. Wide open this time is Gerald Harness. He's got a first down. He's out of bounds to the Youngstown 45. Well, they used that pattern quite a bit in the second half last week against Jackson State after McNair's hamstring gave him trouble. McNair has his man. That is Colby Jenkins. He's driven back by Leon Jones. Tim McNair in the slot to the left. Quick pattern out to the right to Donald Ross. And Ross, does he stay in bounds? We'll have to await the official's mark. I believe it's enough for the first down. 7 nothing, Youngstown. McNair quickly again. And he's going to hit that pattern to the cover. Donald Ross got some room. And he's out of bounds deep in Youngstown territory. Cross wind from McNair's right to his left. Lots of time going for six points and not coming close to Tim McNair. He would do it at any time from any place if he was 100%. Quickly going to the air. Kobe Jenkins has it. Kobe Jenkins near the goal line. And it's a touchdown. McNair to Jenkins. And all court State is on the board. Great recognition both by McNair and by Jenkins. Snap was less than perfect, but the kick is good through the uprights. And so with 8.26 to go in the first quarter, Alcorn State has uh, come back to tie this one up at seven apiece. And McNair did his job that time. They averaging over 37 yards the kickoff return. Kickoff is end over end, and it's short. And it's picked off by one of the up men over the 30, the 35, the 40-yard line. That is Max Gilchrist, the starting Number fullback. 20. Mark Brungard is third offensive series of the day. Brungard pitches out to Sean Patton, who is nailed behind the line of scrimmage. Patton, the long setback behind Brungard on second and 12. Brungard looks for Patton in the flat, has his man up at the 45. So an all court type look for Brungard at Youngstown. Patton, the long setback. They're down at seven. Has his man. Press Boykin, he's wide open in the secondary down at the all-coin 30. Sean Patton on the give. Sean Patton is tackled by Colley, but he picks up significant yardage. One guard to Patton again, leaping, trying for that first down. And again, for our vantage point, it's tough to tell we got it. Penalty flag against Jackson State. Personal foul, Alcorn. This is a power look. And the fullback is English, number 49, behind Bungard. It is the tailback, Pat. Swerving and finally brought down to the turf. Power formation again. Give us to the tailback, Sean Pat. Touchdown! <laughs> For Patton, his 10th touchdown of the season, couldn't have picked a better time. Of course, was even more upset that time. Mazzaro's kick is up, and it is good. Five minutes, 18 seconds still to play in the first quarter. Here from Youngstown State, the Penguins have established a touchdown lead over all corners. Got his great back to where they are between an 1,100 yard rush this year. And a short kickoff, and I do mean short, it'll trickle out of bounds at the 38 yard line. Trips to the top of the screen, but he's going down low to Donald Ross, who's hit immediately, but hangs on. Make it down and four for Alcorn at the 45. There goes the leg. Now it's up to the center. Looking right all the way. Kobe Jenkins, first down, I believe, at the 50-yard line of Belichick. That's right. Trips to the bottom again. First and ten. As his man wide open, Jerome Harness inside the 40 to the 38-yard line. He doesn't catch many, but when they do, they usually go a long way. All the way to the left. McNair over the head of Jenkins, almost intercepted. He's heavily weighted in favor of the forward pass for Alcorn State. Second out of ten. Close the time for McNair. Look at this. He could have a coffee sandwich and dessert. Tim McNair is open to the 20 down of the 15-yard line. One to a bit higher point than the other, I have it. 
Dillon. McGuire going for the end zone. Intercepted. Picked off by Leon Jones. And he is going places. He might go. Donald Ross is the only guy that can get it. Touchdown. I got a dead ball life. foul. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Celebration by the scoring team. Touchdown is good. Mark off the penalty on the kickoff. Kick is up and the kick is good. So Youngstown State has turned two all court state turnovers into quick touchdowns this afternoon. And they have a two-touchdown advantage over the Braves who are a bit shell-shocked. Dorna, remember the penalty for the celebration. He'll take it off from the 20. This will give Alcorn great field position. If they can hang on to it, Singleton does. And he's tackled almost immediately up at the 46-yard line. Probably watching today for a very lucky sneak and ready to be trying to the ball. McNair up to the flat, overthrows Donald Ross. McNair hasn't really attempted to run in this game. Oh, his, his left leg is really bothering. You can see it on his drop back. Completes it to Marcus Hinton inside the 45 to the 43. That hurts the 10 on that completion to Hinton. Ball at the 42 of Youngstown. Off the hands it back into the hands of Jerome Harness. Good concentration is hamstring, and you knew with five days to get ready, there was no way it could really be 100%. Second down and five. Under a bit of a rush this time, and hurries it to Harness. Reginald Lee was right there. One of the 19 pass interceptions for Youngstown coming into this game today. Out of the backfield, Harness again, first down, Jerome Harness, big yardage. <laughs> McNair has to do some running now, he's under a heap of trouble, gets out of it, and he throws it away. And after he throws it, he's hit well after the pass. And for Alcorn at the Youngstown 22, Youngstown leads it 21 to 7. McNair to the sideline, that pattern's been good to him, he hits Gory White, gets away from one or two tacklers, and is out. Long count for McNair. Looking end zone all the way. Now he's going to take off and throw and just can't hit Donald Ross in the end zone. It's a missed drive, I would think. Even though it's still the first quarter. McNair stepping up. Now stepping down to the curb. He is sacked. Mike McLeod got him and brought him down. They're down and goal. A little more room to work with if you're a wide receiver, even though they loss on the play. Double clutching is McNair. He has his man. Touchdown. Tim McNair wide McNair open. Pass. Back of the end zone. Seven, Great job by Steve McNair. He waited and waited and waited. The safety separated everybody. Jakana. Again, the snap less than perfect. The kick is up, and the kick is good, though. With 36 seconds left in the first quarter. You like points? We got points. 21 to 14. And the Braves kick off. And it's taken by number eight of Youngstown State. Over the 30 to the 37 near the 40-yard line. That is Randy Smith, and he's brought down. As he'll take a pause and hope that his defense can hold Youngstown State. Sean Patton on the carry. The Penguin fans are cheering, but I have a feeling they know they're in for a football game this afternoon. After one quarter from Stambaugh Stadium in Youngstown, the playoffs have begun. And Youngstown leads this one 21 to 14. First and 10 to open this drive from their own 45-yard line. John Patton the carry. And he's tackled for little, if any, games. Crowd's very quiet with Youngstown has the ball. One front guard and his receiver to him. He hits the tight end, Terlensky, who rumbles into Alcorn territory. The Alcorn 38. One guard, little screen to Patton. He's got the roll. John Patton alerts to Tackler. Down the sideline he goes. The give to the tailback who started the game. Hendricks and a flag on the play. Get the penalty. Holding on the offense, repeat the down. Yard penalty for the spot of the foul, puts it back in the all court 22, or it's first and 18, and front guard. Good play, back to Whistler, and he's in the end zone, touchdown! What an effort by front guard! John Whistler, 
for the YSU touchdown. It is up and good. And with 12.49 to go in the first half, Don Twistler sits down. He's caught a touchdown pass. And that man's team, the Youngstown State Penguins, lead it by two touchdowns. And again, that has featured several big plays already. Lucy Singleton receiving the kickoff with Todd Jordan. Singleton for Alcorn State over the 30-yard line. Back out at about the 32 before the whistles blow. Three wide receivers to the top of the screen for McNair and Alcorn State. And he goes the other way as he has so often. Jerome Harness over the 40-yard line of the time today. He's under the center. Under the center yeah. Expect we'd see that today, and uh, well, actually the second time. The other time was the other quarterback. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. 11:45 and counting here in the first half. Lots of time for McNair this time. Over the middle he goes to brother Tim McNair. He's got first down yardage from the Youngstown 44. McNair avoids the first rush. Has his man open, that's Donald Wass, who is tripped up. McNair steps up a little bit now, down the sideline, a bad decision, intercepted. Oh, Tom, Tom Paolucci on the interception, and that was a bad decision by McNair. Well, it was, and Paolucci, for the first series of the game, that good interception of Steve McNair on the day. The tailback, Patton, he's head up with Brian Nix, and that means he doesn't go very far. Boykin to the left, Whistler to the right. There goes Brungard down the line. I think he's going to keep this one and discretion to the better part of Allen with Ben Carter running him out of bounds. They're down at five. Brungard steps up, hits his man who may have been hit early. The ball is intercepted, but a flag in the play. We may have some pass interference. Pass interference against the defense. First down, Youngstown. You can see that hit just a tad early. Defending national champion Youngstown, 10-0-1. Leading all Corn State, 28-14. At the tailback. Runs into Collie and Bryant Nix after picking up Number about three, three of them. Here's a give to Gilchrist. His first carry of the day, and Max Gilchrist is over to 45 to the 46. First and 10 of the 45 for the Penguins. Patton picks up about three and a half. At the tailback, 11 carries, 33 yards, three yard average. Second down and five, Patton gets it again. And of a couple fumble on the play. All Corn State is recovered. Calvin Robinson picks it up. There you see the turnover scoreboard on the day. Trips to the bottom of the screen for McNair. Pressure on, he's going long, he's got Tim McNair, and he is hit from behind. Art Carter with great coverage. McNair under pressure, gets rid of it. They're looking for a grounding penalty, they don't have it. And it's going to cost him. And, well, wait a minute. Now, that's an intentional well, ground call. Well, that's the one of the latest flags I've ever oh, seen. Yeah, that's like four men are coming. Yep, they're playing it straight. McLeod almost got him again. Down the right sideline. Tim McNair, and does he have it or not? No, incomplete. Yeah. And lucky, frankly, that it wasn't intercepted. Uh-oh, Castro is going to go down. Bad snap from center. No, they're not going to allow the return, but Jer Jermaine Hopkins... Run him down. I think one guard might go for the whole thing right here. Long. There's Hendricks. Oh, maybe I'm right. He's down near the end zone. And out of bounds. First and goal for Youngstown State. Knocking on the door again. Here goes Patton. Nice thing into the end zone. Touchdown. <laughs> Trying to attempt the extra point, Massaro is up and good. 6.54, a flag on the play. Flag on the play, we'll sort that out after our commercial break. 6.54 to go in the half. Youngstown is up big. John Zorma has been on for a few, but now Massaro will take his turn. Zorma had a different success. Singleton will take this at about the five-yard line. Percy Singleton. Tackle just over the 20. First and 10 at the 22 for Alcorn. 
sidelines to Marcus Hinton. Short game. Gain of five on that pass from McGair to Hinton. Second and five. McGair has to avoid his own man. Lofting it up. Intercepted again. Lester Weaver. Down the sidelines. And finally stopped around the 20-yard line. You wish as uh, someone who's interested in great competition that everybody was 100%, but it's not going to be that way for either team. And they give us to Mac Gilchrist, second down and seven. Patton. Sean Patton. Look out. Is he in there? First and goal at the two. Patton again. Patton scores again. Exact same play they ran the play before. 41 to 14, and Youngstown is beginning to blow this thing wide open early. Flag on the play again. That's the second straight extra point for you. Offside against Alcorn, so the point will stand. He was wondering here at Stambaugh Stadium, and the people are excited with good reason. A sellout crowd cheering on their Youngstown State Penguins, undefeated, defending national champs, looking every bit like it. Leading Alcorn State 42 to 14. Not on at all by Steve McNair, and Corey White says, I think we'll take this at the 20. McNair did not run out of the field. He walked gingerly. He is far from 100% in this quarter, though. Only four of eight, no touchdowns, two interceptions. Goes to the sideline. Colby Jenkins has it up near the 30-yard line. He's there consistent. Oh, look at this. A straight give to the running back. First time we've seen that today. <laughs> Second down at eight. Dump off the harness. Over the 40, has the first down. For the six defensive backs to the football team. Let's see how McNair reacts to this cover. He's going over the middle, has his man, Corey White. First down yardage for 44. McNair to the sideline again. Jenkins tries to sidestep his man, but... With a 42-14 lead, second and two for all court. Almost a free play the way they throw the ball. Over the middle, Jenkins finally breaks loose. Jones, the tackle. <laughs> All right, first and 10 at the 28 for Alcorn State. Under a rush is McNair, and he's going to go down. I think he went down on his own before he was taken down by McLeod. <laughs> Lost his six on that last play. McNair gets rid of it in a hurry before he was sacked again. <laughs> McNair to the sideline to Tim McNair, but does he have enough for the first down? Fourth down and six. Pass is caught by Jerome Harness. And out of bounds he goes, stopping the clock. He might, well, first down, Youngstown State. One guard with a play action, got a wide open, Whistler down the middle. Now he's covered and almost intercepted. This Whistler was hooked by 8 and 10 yards at one point in that time. Slows quickly, and here's Patton. Patton is hit almost as soon as he takes the handoff. Very impressive first half today. You can see while they're right number one, there goes Patton. Couple of men will keep him from the end zone. Alcorn State Braves being scalped so far in the first half. Four seconds to go in the half. One more play for Brungard and Youngstown. Brungard deep over the middle. Has his man. That's Whistler. He gets away. And finally, Bell forces him out of bounds to end the first half of play. Well, they call this place Stambaugh Stadium, but affectionately known as the Ice Castle, and now we know why. <laughs> Not too bad today. 42 to 14, that's our halftime score. All right, first things first, Youngstown State starts off with a 28-point lead, first and 10 of their own 27. And Brungard hands off to Patton. Big hole up the middle for Patton, and there he goes! Just tripped up inside the 10-yard line. Right the yard run. And the give is to Akia Hendricks. Patton again. This time he is caught in the backfield. He's spread out to the top of the screen. Big to Patton. 
Dunbar, touchdown! Nathan Toy! Freshman running back, 10 yards, touchdown pass. Look out, it may be over. No wonder they're unbeaten in rank number one in the country. And the extra point is good. A 49 to 14 score. They waste little time. Jim Trestle's team on the board in less than two minutes. Coming into last week's game, he had only seven pass attempts. Now the season had two more last week. We'll see if he'll replace McNair, who is nowhere near 100%. The kickoff, meanwhile. So first attempt for Alcorn for the 35. And Youngstown knows they have to throw every play, but then again, don't they anyway? Yep. The difference is the passes might have to go deeper. Like this one to Tim McNair. He gets it for a first down. That's a triple crown for a receiver. Yep. McNair, lots of time. Gets it off just in time, and good defense that time. 10th anniversary of the pass. Never forget that game as long as I live. Steve McNair going to the sidelines. Ross is open this time. They give him tons of room. It goes to the cotton bowl. All right, back here in Youngstown. Immediately, it's McNair to the air. Ross has it for a very short game. Just the right shot of this one today. Three more rounds to go for the eventual champion, whoever that may be. Pass complete from McNair to Harness. Triple receivers to the top. Pressure is on. Tim McNair, good defense in front of him again. In the Bayou Classic every year, that'll be on tomorrow. So that's why they're not in the playoffs. They make that decision to play Southern rather than play in the playoffs. And here's the pass complete to Kobe Jenkins, who's back from that injury in the first half. He picks up a first down. So Alcorn, threatening to come back. After Youngstown over the second half. Wide open on that pattern all day. Jerome Arnold inside the 10. And Harness is open at the 5. Steps out at the 4. Trell Shelby and Harness in there. Here's Harness fumbling the football. Who's got it? Youngstown appeared to have it, but hold everything. Alcorn keep Alcorn State retained. You know why that happened? It's because of the hamstring. He they give to Harness again. Another fumble. And this one is picked off. Randy Smith. He may go coast to coast. And there's going to be 11 Youngstown guys in that end zone with him. 95 yards. It's now 55 to 14. No for the high. <laughs> <Be quiet. laughs> Extra point is up and good. Ten minutes, five seconds left in the third quarter. I couldn't resist that one. <laughs> Youngstown <laughs> pressing on court state. There's no other way to say it. Penguins kicking off again. Gory White at the 10. Up the middle. Over the 25-yard line. Keep on doing what he does best. Throw that football. Harness again. Another fumble. It's loose. And Youngstown has it. Well, your receivers can't hang out of the ball. And your running back's fumble. You're in deep trouble. Patton, he fumbles the football. Number three. And Alcorn motions they have it. The official does as well, so back-to-back -back turnovers. First and 10 of the 30. And the pass is complete for Alcorn State at number 47, Betrell Shelby. Personal foul. Yep. I guess the microphone is not operating correctly. After the play. McNair flushed out of the pocket, steps up and hits his man over the middle. First and 10 at the Youngstown 32. Over the middle again, has his man Kobe Jenkins inside the 25 to the 23. He's world special team unit at this level in the country. Quick to the sideline, has his man Ross, as the Youngstown State defenders laying way off their men. Hey, I, they really had to dig there yeah, I to told get the hens in there. We spare no effort <laughs> in that department. Love my association appreciate it. Here's the McNair trying to get away, just can't do it. Alcorn. Just a better team, that's all. 
sometimes he's a better team. McNair. And I believe a short hop catch that time. Yep. Had a cup of coffee in the NFL. McNair. Got to get 15 yards at least. Dumps it across the middle to Jenkins, and he's surrounded. It's almost nothing. All right, fourth down and 11, or 12, here for Alcorn State. Over the middle to Kobe Jenkins. He can't hang on. He was close to first down yardage. Great Eastern, 5 Pacific, a crucial game for the playoff hopes for each team. So the competition will be fast and furious in the, the big ugly. <laughs> you said that, not me. <laughs> The handoff is stopped for a loss. They're down at one. And somebody jumped to where they draw it. I tell you, dead ball foul. Start of the season. Encroachment on the defense. Results in a first down. First down at 10 at the 29. Front guard. He's in trouble now. Got to get away. He does so. He got away from Middleton. And Brian Mix comes back to get him at the 32. Front guard is 6'1", junior. Out of New Middleton, Ohio. And here's the give to Nakia Hendricks. He's short of the first down. Up the down on the uh, four-yard interception return for a touchdown. A couple of big plays. Everything appears to go so smooth. They, they may be off their feet a little bit here. A rare punt today for the Penguins. Grislinski on a nice spiraling punt. Singleton weighs for the fair catch and has it. First and 10 for Alcorn State at their own 14 after the punt. McNair completes it to Jenkins, who gets away from the initial tackler and should have first down yardage. In the 13, first to 10 for the 27. McNair, a sad sight as he just limps to the 30 and falls down. Friends, <laughs> hats off to Mr. Jones. And a two, second down and eight. Jenkins, the catch. That is 35. Certainly not at the top of the game. And when you're not against a great team like Youngstown State, you're going to fall behind by 56-14, which is the score. Shelby breaks loose, and McNair forces it on the sideline. Former Penn State performance. That's right. Second out of 10. Over the middle again. Almost intercepted and knocked away by Lester Weaver. Come on. Third down for McNair, steps up. Can't run it, so throws it instead for Shelby, and interference going to be flying here on Vance Mays. Player no matter what. Well, he plays this year on Saturdays. He will play on Sundays next year somewhere. McNair over the middle. So Tim McNair, another first down at the 35. Down state team, they're a better football team, the defending national champs, they deserve the respect. Toby Jenkins at the 30 gets no respect at all from Reginald Lee. Three quarters in the books here. And Jim Dressel is happy and why not? The Youngstown State Penguins, undefeated on the season, have a 56 to 14 lead. One quarter to go before they sit and wait to see who they'll play next week. The Penguins were playing. <laughs> I didn't know that was coming. Oh, I had to get there somehow. McNair. Hassled from behind. Georgia Southern have any kind of legacy that can match up with this. Third and five for Alcorn after the incompletion. The completion to Jenkins. I don't know if he got the first down. First and 10 of the 25. Remember, 17 points, the most given up in a game this year by Youngstown State. Jenkins. His band on the flag after the catch. We may have had interference anyway by Reggie Brown. McNair. McNair's Heisman chances may uh, get a boost by national TV. McNair just losing it for the back of the end zone. Actually thrown out of way. Next opponent for the Penguins. Where that game? Where to be determined? Another one for the back of the end zone. Always throwing. Healthy, he'd be on the run right now. He's not healthy. Throws it and a touchdown. It is caught by Shalonzo Miller for the score. And at least all I can say we scored more points against these guys than anybody. That's the point. And they're gonna box that up. That was not held. And Youngstown State, they could run this back, you know, but they'll just fall on it. Youngstown State well in control of this one. 
we have 13 13 to go here in the fourth quarter what has turned into a route frankly in the first round of the division one double-a playoffs youngstown state in control and returning this kickoff Sean Patton, ahead for a couple of yards. And so immersed getting got, ready for his football game. Got a suspension, I think he misses tonight. That will hurt UMass. That will hurt UMass. You don't have to throw the ball 70 times in a game. No doubt about that. Very well-rounded squad. Boykin makes the catch. He's got the first down, and he's tackled inside of 45. I had a bunch of them. <laughs> oh, look at this. Whistler coming around. Taking a pitch, gonna catch up to him. He'll gain a couple, but he'll pay the price. Five sacks. Help. Bring that total well below the middle of the line. Here's pass interference, obviously, against Fonte Dowries. And Dowries makes some pass plays this year. That wasn't one of them. On the defense. First down. Going for Boykin on the sideline. Wide open. Inside the 20 to the 18. Play action. Going for the end zone. Touchdown, Whistler. That is the exact same play that clicked on the first half. Both corner routes. Whistler man-to-man coverage with Richard White. Average here. Extra point is academic and true. 63 to 20. Youngstown State is what well, we've known for some time on its way to the second round. And they scored against Northeastern on September 28th of 91. Before that, every Northeastern grad in the country is thankful. That name is now off the list. Here's Dory White of Alcorn. Trying to do some business on the ensuing kickoff, and he's not going anywhere. Except down rudely. They go to the day of the week. McNair looking left, looking right. Kobe Jenkins, who I think is going to be a real good receiver. I think he's already real good. Is that Jenkins again up at the 30-yard liner? Donald Ross stays in bounds, makes the first down catch, and is stopped up at the 44-yard line right now. Finally dumps over the middle, and it's caught by Petrell Shelby into Youngstown territory into today's game. And after this season. Come on, over the middle, wide open is Tim McNair. First down at the 35-yard line. I'll bet number nine gets a full ride. <laughs> I like to go out in the ledge. <laughs> and down goes McNair. He may have lost possession. They call him down by contact. A, a different kind of athlete. A different athlete. Yeah. There's just no getting around that. Over the middle and incomplete to Jenkins. They're down at 19 to go. McNair will throw into the shadows. And has Donald Ross. Moving back. Has intended for number 82, second attempt. From the 23. Wide open is Tim McNair, but he started to trim. The Youngstown will host a game next week against the winner of Eastern Kentucky and Boston U. So, Boston U and Eastern Kentucky, beware. <laughs> Gotta come here to the Palace. Corey White with, with what would be a miraculous catch if they give it to him, and I think they are. Over the middle and almost intercepted. Having a beat on it was Art Carter. This is Mr. Asher's family down in Arkansas. Oh, excuse me. It's not parked. It's Damon Tidwell, number 10. Exactly right. Tidwell. Hands the ball off to number 33. Let's see if he'll throw one up here at third and nine. He's going to give it a go on play action. Across the middle and almost intercepted by Jermaine Brown. Alan Haynes. It's been a tough season defensively for Alcorn. Yes, it has. Single and singles for a fair catch in the shadow. Can't handle it. That jumps forward. Is he recovered or not? Who's got it? 
Youngstown State has it, according to the referee. So Youngstown recovers the muff puck. And away they'll go. Give to the tailback. Omari Parts and Parts. That's got a dead ball foul. Personal foul. On the offense. First and ten. I think it's easier to take the feed when you know you didn't have a shot. Yeah, I don't think the PK is real good either way, but there's no Parts. Mean. Yeah. Parts uh, collar by Bryant Mix. Straight ahead running again. The record performance by the Youngstown State Penguins today, 63 points on the board. And basically what they're doing now is they're down at six. Under two minutes to play, as you see. Tidwell going to give it another go. Via the airway, into the end zone, and knocked away. Down the line goes Tidwell. He's going to have the first down. Look at this. Inside the 15 to the 14. From springtime. Tidwell cuts it back in again, but he can't escape the grass this time of Lawrence Hill. Second down and five on the line. Parks. And he's hit behind the line of scrimmage. 